Hi, I'm Eddie, and in today's video, we're going to discuss some advanced commands in RPN mode. Just a warning, not all cast functions and commands will work in RPN entry mode, and the ones that do will require a specific syntax. Because the syntax is detailed, I will leave the syntax for all the commands demonstrated today in the video's description. The toolbox key is the key that looks like a treasure chest, and the template key is a key of templates. They are both located on the top row of the white keys, just right of the vars key. Our first commands are max and min, which finds the maximum or minimum from a group of arguments. There are two ways to do this. The first is to enter a list or vector, then execute max of one or min of one. In this case, the one represents the first stack level. The second way is to list all arguments on the stack and execute max of n or min of n, where n is the number of stacks, up to nine. Both commands are found on the toolbox math arithmetic menu. As a short demonstration, let's take the list of four, 12, five, nine, and six, and find the maximum and minimum of those list. First, the maximum. We're going to hit toolbox, arithmetic, maximum. We're dealing with the list. We're going to put one as the argument, and the result is 12. I'm going to swap levels one and two. This time, we're going to go for the minimum. So we're going to hit toolbox, arithmetic, and then the minimum, and one as the argument. And the minimum is four. The next command is I factor, which factorizes any integer. The steps are pretty simple. First, input an integer and press enter. Then press the toolbox button. Under the cast submenu, select integer, then the second option, factors. This will call up the cast.I factor function. Enter one as the argument. Press enter, and you will get the factorization of the integer. For our example, 76 factorized is two squared times 19. The next command is make list. Make list takes an expression and makes a sequence. Place the stack as follows. Enter the function in single quotes, then press enter. You can access the single quotes by pressing shift, then the parentheses key. Next, you're going to enter the variable by itself, then press enter. The variable must be uppercase. Type the beginning point and then press enter. Type the ending point, press enter. Finally, type the increment or decrement between the beginning and end point and press enter. Call up the command by pressing the toolbox key, the math submenu, the list submenu, and the make list command. We're going to enter five as its arguments because we're using five arguments. Press enter. Next, we will find roots of a polynomial. One of the easiest ways to do this is to use the cas.pRoot command. The argument will be a list or vector if you prefer, of coefficients of decreasing power, starting from x to the n power to the constant, x to the zero power. For example, a cubic polynomial will be represented with a list of four coefficients, one for x cubed, then x squared, x, and constant. Include zeros as placeholders whenever appropriate. Type the list or vector of coefficients representing the polynomial that you want to solve. When you're done, press enter, then press the toolbox key, the cast menu, the polynomial menu, and then the find roots option. You will see cast.pRoot. Enter one as its argument, then press enter. What is returned is a list of the roots of the polynomial. Next, we use the sigma function 
cast.sum. Assume that the increment is 1. Let's demonstrate our steps. Start by typing in the function in single quotes, then press enter. Next, type the variable in single quotes, then press enter. The variable must be in uppercase. Then type the starting point, press enter. The finishing point, press enter. Then to call up the cast.sum command, press the toolbox key and in the cast menu, select calculus, then option five for summation and enter four as the argument to the cast.sum command. Press enter to get your sum. Integration in RPN mode isn't the easiest thing to do. The way I got this to work is to use a template. The integration template is at the second row, fourth column of the template keypad. Once the integral is entered, call up the cast.simplify command to get the final answer. Start by pressing the template key and selecting the integral template. Fill in the blanks, and when you're done, press enter. The variable has to be in uppercase for RPN mode. Now let's call the cast.simplify command. Press the toolbar key, select the algebra menu in the cast menu, simplify, and one because we're gonna simplify the first stack level. Press enter, and then you'll have your answer. Numerical derivatives take a multi-step process. First, we're gonna store the point in the variable we are going to use. Then, similar to numeric integration, we'll call out the template. The derivative template is on the first row, fourth column. We'll use cast.simplify to get the final answer. First, enter the value of the point you're going to work with. Press enter. The next thing we're going to do is enter the variable in single quotes, once again pressing enter. We're going to store the value by pressing shift, then the EEX key to store the value. The next thing we're going to do is select the template key, and then we're going to select the derivative template, first row, fourth column. The numerator is going to be where your function goes. Make sure you use the same variable as the variable used to store your point. The denominator of this template, we're just going to type in your variable. Make sure your variable is in uppercase. Press enter, and then to simplify and get our final answer, we're going to select the toolbox, CAS, algebra, simplify to call up the CAS.simplify command, enter one for the argument, press enter, and then we get to our numerical derivative. Working with matrices, here are three common operations, determinant, inverse, and eigenvalues. First, we have to put the matrix on the stack. The easiest way to do this is by using the matrix template. Press the template key, then select the matrix template, which is located on the first row and sixth column on the template grid. The first thing we want to do is enter the matrix. We'll select the template key and then the matrix template, first row, sixth column, and we'll enter our matrix. Make it as big or small as necessary. Press enter when you're done. I will duplicate the matrix three times for this demo. To calculate the determinant, press the toolbox. In the math menu, we'll select matrix and the second option, determinant. The determinant of a matrix is calculated right away. To calculate the inverse of a matrix, just press shift and the division key. It's as simple as that. To find the eigenvalues, we're gonna select the toolbox, the math menu, matrix. We'll select the sixth option, advanced, and the first option, eigenvalues. Cast.eigenval is called to the screen. We're gonna use one as the argument because we're gonna take the matrix 
from the first stack. We only use one argument here. Press enter and you get your eigenvalues. And that's a short demonstration on how to use some of the matrix functions in RPN mode. The final thing I will demonstrate in this video is the fn root command, which allows us to find numerical roots of an equation. fn root assumes that the equation is equal to zero. You will need to supply an initial guess, which will come in handy for equations with multiple roots. To start, put the expression in single quotes and then press enter. Remember, the expression is going to be equal to zero, but you don't have to actually put equals zero. The next step is to put the variable in single quotes and press enter again. Remember that the variable must be in uppercase. The next step is to supply a guess. Press enter. The better the guess, the better your solution. Now, press the toolbox key and in the math menu, select arithmetic, the fourth option, find root. Fn root is going to be called to the stack. We're using three stack levels three arguments. So we're going to have fn root of three, press enter, and you get your solution. This demonstrates some of the advanced functions in RPN mode. You can visit my blog at edspy31415.blogspot.com. Thank you very much and have a terrific day.